Okay, to find the domain of a function, we're going to be looking at the x-axis to look for all possible x values or inputs that work for a function or a relation. And it's going to be stated in least to greatest form. There's a couple ways we can write the domain, which we'll talk about in this review. The range is going to be the y values or outputs of a function or a relation using the y-axis to look for the possible values. It's also going to be stated from least to greatest, which on the graph will be bottom to top. And there's also multiple ways we can write that answer, which we'll talk about. Just as a quick reminder for interval notation, we are going to use closed brackets when talking about a closed dot or included value of the graph, and we're going to be using open brackets at the open dots or excluded values or infinity symbols if a graph goes to negative infinity or positive infinity. It can be a different bracket on each side. It can be open and then closed or closed and then open or vice versa. Let's take a look at some examples. On this first graph, the domain, which I'm going to shorten with just a D, um, the domain is going to be from the left to right. What is the leftmost point that this graph goes to? And it's continuing, continuing, continuing until forever. And what's the rightmost point that this graph goes to, which is continuing forever? So how would I state this domain? I'm going to state that it goes from negative infinity to infinity. Because infinity is not an included value that I can touch, I use open brackets. Another way to state this domain is literally every number on the number line in both directions. So we call that all real numbers. It's like an R with a double line at the back. So we could say all real numbers. We could say negative infinity to infinity. These are two ways to state the domain. Now let's talk about the range of this function. And by the way, it is a function because it only touches once. So if I want to look from the least point of the graph to the greatest point of the graph, I look down at my minimum of the graph. And the minimum is a boundary across. It's not just any one point. Even though on this graph there is only one dot at that bottom, it is that boundary line. So since the minimum of this graph goes through y equals negative 2, I can state that my range goes from negative 2 forever in the infinity direction. So I'm going to say from negative 2 to infinity. Again, infinity is not an included value because it can't be touched, but the range does include this negative 2. It does go through negative 2. So I would say that the range goes from negative 2 to infinity, and this is how I would state that in interval notation. I can also say that it includes all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 2. So if I wanted to state it in words, I could also say all real numbers greater than or equal to 2. All right, let's go take a look at the next one, this circle. What's my domain of this graph? So I'm looking at the leftmost point. It goes out to a negative 3, all the way to the rightmost point, which goes out to a 3. So I'm going to say that the domain goes from negative 3 to 3. I'm using the x values, and all of these are included. What kind of brackets would I use when it goes through negative 3, and I want to include that number, and through 3, that should be closed bracket. In words, I could say this goes from negative 3 to 3. Next, let's talk about the range. The range goes now from the bottom to the top, which on a circle, because these are all equidistant from the center, it happens to be the same numbers. So from negative 3 to 3, because those are included values, I use closed bracket. Now let's look at this next one. It's a little bit trickier. On this next one, my domain starts at negative infinity and is going, 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 going. From here, there's a section of interest where I'm thinking, wait a sec. Is there a break in this domain, or does it pick right up where it left off? stop, picks right up where it left off, continue. There is actually still just one domain on this graph, even though there's some breaks and this is a piecewise function. So this domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. And then we can also say all real numbers. All right, let's go take a look at this one here as well. This domain continues and continues, but it starts right at the same dot so my domain of this one is also negative infinity to infinity. 
let's go talk about the range on these guys now. Now the range on this one, the lowest most boundary line or minimum of this graph is here. Then as I move up the graph, because of this nice solid line, it just again continues forever in that direction. So I'm gonna say that the range goes from zero to infinity and the zero is included. I could also state this in words to say all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. Looking at this next one for the range, again, we have it starting at that lower boundary or minimum of zero to infinity again. Even though there's some overlap in those pieces, it still goes from zero to infinity. All right, let's look at the last two. In this one, there's a definite break in the domain or a gap right here in between these two. And this is an open dot, so it won't be included. And this is an open dot, so it will not be included. So when I state this domain, I have to state it in parts. I have to state that it goes from negative infinity to negative two, open, because that's not included. And then I use a U for union, meaning and, and it goes from one to infinity. Notice again, it's an open bracket because it's an open dot and it's not included. I have seen some students who put an open bracket through it like this, an open bracket through this, to remind themselves for that open dot to use an open bracket there. Finally, we're looking, oops, range on that guy. Notice that it's going forever down and it's going forever up, even though it's a slow progression up and down. So my range goes from negative infinity to infinity because there is this overlap between those both pieces, but it is going forever down and forever up. Okay, this over here is called the greatest integer function. And this is an interesting one because it's like a step function or piecewise function where you start at this integer and you're moving along stop, but it picks right up at that spot and continues right up there and continues right up there and continues, et cetera, et cetera. These dashed lines are not part of the graph. It's just these line segments that are going horizontally. So for my domain, it goes from here to here. Right where it stops, it starts up, starts up, starts up. So my domain is actually all real numbers again. Now for my range, I basically want to say all these individual numbers are included. Um, I could be like, oh, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So I could just list out the range with the picture of this graph, but for the true full function, how could I say basically every negative number, zero, and every positive number for the range for the full y equals the greatest integer function for the range, I would actually just say that big capital I for all integers. The range of the greatest integer function is all integers. And I use that letter I that represents that. Okay, let's talk about domain and range from a table. If all I'm given is a table, then when I list out my domain, I have to use set notation and list out the individual pieces. Likewise for the range, when only given a table, not a function, not a graph, I have to just list them out separately from least to greatest. On this next one, when there happens to be a repeat in the x's, even though it's not a function, I still can list the domain. The domain here from least to greatest is only two and only four. Those are the only two numbers I need. Now looking down at the range, I have six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So if the table is given in out of order, you're gonna put it in order when you list it in the range least to greatest. These just happen to be in order already. Here for this one for the domain, again, list it out individually. But when I get to the range, which is repeated, the only thing I have to say is that my range is just three. So when given a table, I'm gonna use set notation and list out the domains and ranges individually. Same for a mapping diagram. If I'm just given the inputs and the outputs or the X's and the Y values, uh, 
in this mapping diagram, when I list these out, I'm going to list them out in set notation. Same for the range. Make sure you're putting them in order least to greatest if they're not already given that way. The nice thing about the mapping diagram is it's already going to condense down to only listing these items once the repeated values don't show. Notice how this one I put in the order of 2, 3, 4, even though in the input column it said 2, 4, 3. Please write these least to greatest when you're listing them out in set notation. And there's only a 4, so I only have to put a range of 4. Finally, when given just an equation to talk about the domain and range, I want to talk about the fact that, again, if you're able to visualize these, if you could use a graphing function and start to put these into that graphing function and become familiar with what these different graphs look like, the sooner you become familiar with the different types of graphs, the better for your math studies. So in this first one, envision this line. The domain of a line is always going to be forever in both directions. When given a function, like an equation, a function, we're going to assume that that function goes on continuously in both directions. So we're going to use interval notation when given a function, and we're going to talk about it going forever, unlike the table that we only know the values that are given in the table. So my domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, or I could also say all real numbers. My range goes up and down forever. My range is also negative infinity to infinity. So linear functions always have this domain and range when given to you in equation form. Quadratic equations go forever left and forever right. The domain on all quadratics is always negative infinity to infinity because they're always going to keep going left and right. But the range of a quadratic is bound by that min or that max, which is your vertex. So in the case of this quadratic, since it's got this minimum at negative 5, we're going to say the range goes from negative 5 to infinity. Since that negative 5 is included, we can put a closed bracket. I can also say the domain of all quadratics is all real numbers. I can also say the range in this case would be all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 5. In this cubic function, which you will study in depth in Math 3, this cubic function will always go right forever and left forever. The domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. I can say the domain includes all real numbers. The range of this always goes down forever and always goes up forever. So I can also say that the range is all real numbers. Now let's go take a look at this absolute value graph, which is a V-shaped graph. Even as you're becoming more familiar with this graph, please take this equation, plug it into Desmos, look at what that graph looks like until you become familiar with this. But this one goes forever left and forever right, just like the quadratic. It's just a V shape instead of a U shape. The domain of all absolute value functions is always negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. But the range, just like the quadratic, is bound by that minimum or that maximum. So in this case, the minimum, if I look over, and this is 2, this minimum is going to be at 1. So I'm going to say that the range of this function goes from 1 to infinity. So in the absolute value function and the quadratic function, your range is bound by that minimum or maximum, that vertex. I could also state this in words and say all real numbers greater than or equal to 1. For the square root function, again, we're not familiar with this yet. We're just getting used to what a square root function always looks like. But this looks like it always goes forever to the right, but it's bound here by this stopping point, in this case, right here at the axis. So for my domain of this function, I'm going to say it goes from 0 to infinity. 
and we're going to include that value right there on the axis. For the range of this function, I can't quite see on this graph where the lines are, but here on the function I can see that it has moved up four. So that spot right there is at four. That constant value is your intercept, your y-intercept, just like in linear, just like in quadratics. There's this random constant at the end. Well, guess what? That's your y-intercept. That is going to be my range, min or max, again, on this kind of square root graph. So this range happens to go from 4 to infinity. Include that 4. I could also state this in words, and I could say all real numbers greater than or equal to 4. Finally, I'm going to go over here to this one that's called a rational function. I may not be familiar with this function yet, but I can tell that just looking at this graph, it goes forever left and it goes forever right, but there's this weird blank spot right in the middle, which later you'll learn is called a vertical asymptote. At this moment though, and I can tell that vertical asymptote has something to do with this x minus 8 right here, because look, it lands right at that 8. But either way, I don't know what that is yet. That's coming up in future math classes, but I can tell that this goes from negative infinity to that weird stopping point and then continues from that point onto infinity again. So for this one, for the domain, it's going to be two domains with that gap in between, stating that the domain goes from negative infinity up to 8, both not included, and then from 8 to infinity, both not included. The range goes forever down and forever up, but there's this weird horizontal boundary or blank or emptiness that's happening right there. You'll later learn that this is a horizontal asymptote in Math 3. But for right now, we're just going to state that it goes from negative infinity up to that 0, and then it goes from 0 to infinity. And that's just a quick review on domain and range. Remember that we can give it an interval notation. We do use set notation sometimes when we want to list out the domain and range separately, like on that greatest integer function um, that was just the integers. And that there are these new graphs we're going to be exposed to that do have domain restrictions that we're going to want to start paying attention to as we become more familiar with new types of graphs.